All right, hello and welcome to a Stampscapes Not Live. <laughs> I, I need to get a bunch of stuff done and I want to do what I'm hoping is a fast scene. Now we know how that always kind of plays out when I do these, I don't know. I start uh, doing these scenes thinking it's going to be, you know, a pretty fast one. I don't know, 30, 40 minutes maybe, and it ends up being, I don't know, an hour and a half because I get kind of caught up in all the additions and little details that I think would really make the uh, scene look pretty cool. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe it's going to be a, a yeah, I don't know, part one and part two um, kind of linked together. Okay, so I have um, kind of rough composition in mind. I'm going to be using the nature set number 30 figures um, together on this one. This is almost a half page uh, horizontal slim line here. I have cut off um, an inch off the length, giving it a uh, four and a quarter by 10 inch um, semi-gloss uh, cardstock, uh, as opposed to the glossy that I just used uh, in the past uh, two scenes. Thought it was time to do a semi again. And let's see where that goes. Okay, so I have that figure there. And that figure is going to be watching the moonlight and this other figure is going to be dancing in the moonlight right here. And we're going to be doing these moon beams in here, okay? And let's see, I'm trying to get these, um, I don't know, roughly, they look about the same scale. So if you have something lower, it means that they're closer, okay? If you have something higher, it means they're kind of farther back in the distance. These two are about the same, and they're roughly the same scale. This one's a little bit bigger scale, okay? So I'm going to put her a little bit lower than this figure here, okay? All right, so I'm going to put her about right here. You can go up or down, you know, a quarter inch or something like that. I, I just wouldn't have her down like a, you know, two inches above or below this figure here because it would, represent, you know, this one would represent, you know, something that's uh, much larger or much smaller. So you put them roughly around on the same um, plane, okay? Distance from one another. Okay, so that is that. We're going to do a little bit of uh, masking here, which I hardly ever do with... Um, my land-based elements because I've designed them where I don't have to do, um, you know, a lot of masking, which I kind of find, you know, to be, oh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of part of the tedium of, uh, you know, stamping, I don't know, image blending, comp you know, image com com uh, combining, I should say, not just in a uh, uh, scenic stamping, but any kind of stamping. So I like to make things where you don't have to do all that type of work, and thus I make things look so easy. That's what everyone's always saying uh, in comments on uh, Facebook. Well, I make it look easy because I made the designs easy to use, you know. Um, where it gets a little bit harder is when people start to employ all those, you know, kind of more tedious types of uh, um, techniques. Um, where they're not needed, okay? <laughs> so uh, things blend together, in other words, much easier too in scenic stamping when you're not, uh, you know, when you're overlapping things. But this is a figure, so I don't want, uh, you know, you don't want leaves running into, you know, someone's head or something like that. Okay, so she's sitting next to a tree like that. I could have masked a little bit lower down like that, but that's fine. Okay, so there's one tree right there. She's kind of leaning up against the tree. See how that, uh, see, I, that's why I had, I made this figure right here. I thought, oh, she's gonna be perfect, like leaning in and, you know, checking out, uh, checking out what's going on in the scene. You know, you can have stars or whatever out there and 
you know, that little figure will be looking at it made in both the right and left side. I won't use both of them in this scene, but, uh, you know, uh, I guess you could. Okay, these are going to be flanked. <laughs> this tree's a little bit lower than this one, you know, giving it a little bit of scale. Okay, so these figures are going to be... Um, checking out the scene, like so. Dancing in the forest. I guess one of them is going to be dancing in the forest, at least. Okay, going a little bit higher, representing, yeah, a little bit more distant tree. Not that much more distant, though. All right, I think that's uh, pretty good right there in terms of uh, our, you know, kind of foundation, our structuring of the composition. The main components are down. All right, now, one of the things that um, I was kind of covering with uh, um, someone recently was I was talking about, um, they were saying that they... They can, you know, they, they, they're really good with following um, the videos and scenes, but kind of putting their own compositions together, that's where they can use a little bit of work, you know, because they've been used to kind of following along, uh, which is a really great way to learn something. But, um, you know, if you kind of want to progress and to, um, you know, be able to come up with your own compositions, you know, start off with, a you know, just a general concept. I'm going to waterfall scene, you know. And then you just start building, is it going to be nighttime or daytime? You use a moon or a sun or stars up in the sky like this one's going to be. Um, or this one will be a moon. But this is where we've laid down our foundation elements, okay? For, you know, I called it the, uh, I don't know what I called it, the four Fs or the five Fs or something like that. It's a good way to remember things, though, foundation. And then filler stamps. Now, in this one, these kind of are focal points right here when you add people. And I had to add those in first because they are open designs and I can't just have that tree there and stamp this figure right over the top of it because all the, that tree structure is going to show right through. So I had to stamp her first and then mask her off. And that goes the same for this figure right here. So, but a lot of times those focal points are, you know, kind of like silhouette based images like this. And that could be just stamped whenever. Actually, that'd be kind of cool having some animals in here real kind of nature, kind of inspired, you know, Mother Nature type of uh, imagery, I guess. Okay. Let's go with... Uh, let's see where my moons are. Where are my moons? I need to find my moon set. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> well, we have a choice of different moons here. Let's go for this one right here. Stamp it up there. All right, let's see. I'm trying to think of what colors do I want to do this in. Maybe let's go with our blue tones again. I've been doing a lot of blues, you know, for my nighttime scenes these uh, past couple days. And let's try that again. <laughs> As I look at this one again, it's like what happened in my uh, scene from a couple nights ago where I made it into a mirror card. It's, you know, we can do that again here too. I don't know if I'm going to do that, you know. I don't do that every card a mirror card, but uh, I don't know, it could be pretty fascinating. We'll see how this goes. Um, if it, you know, if something can be improved from the initial concept to the final result, going off track or adding something in, we, you know, we always do that. So that's, that's why I always, videos kind of always run a little bit longer than kind of my initial intention. 
They never go shorter. They're always going longer. So I really should be one of those people that um, kind of, I don't know, overstate how long something should take. So it seems like it takes less time. <laughs> All right. So there's that moon in there. And okay. So should I add in some additional clouds around that? I think it could be fascinating to do that. I could add um, some other trees in the background here as well. Uh, maybe um, some trees in the distance, I guess we can do. Um, hmm. More pine trees, but maybe we'll do them in kind of a blue tone. Okay, now that was stamped out in um, a Prussian blue, and maybe I'll go with that same color. Th that can be open sky too, maybe. Hmm. Or I can have some cloud texturing in there. I'm trying to think of what I want to do here. There's a, it, it's not like, oh my gosh, I made the wrong choice. It's, um, you know, if you do something, it's just like, I, I mean, I can do a bit of both too, but maybe, maybe let's keep it, let's keep it a little bit more minimal now that I'm thinking about it. Um, just so that that figure stands out a little bit more than if I, um, added anything in that's too strong behind it okay now i wasn't going to do list uh, everything in black i was going to do it in uh, like tones so that it, they're lighter and look more distant okay but let's just keep things really a little bit more minimal and bring the focus more on these figures here okay not that they wouldn't be kind of the uh, the focal point anyway but they'll be even more so the less you kind of put around them. You know what I mean? It, it puts them more in the spotlight. Okay, so sky figures, you just kind of wipe off the edges like that. Okay. And then you stamp it out. I'm pointing the billows towards my light source. Okay, so um, you can put me that these, you know, any which way. I'm having this go into my meadow a little bit. Ooh, that was a really dark blue. I forgot. I used and didn't clean off this stamp. So <laughs> we're, you know, changing changing strategies here a little bit, you know, with, with how dark this is going to be. It's just going to be, you know, a little bit darker than my initial intention. So be it. Now, the more I use this, it should be getting a little bit lighter as I go. We'll see. Okay. Now, let's mess this off a little bit like this. See, this billows are facing towards my moon. Like that. And, and I stamped it into my tree because the trees are going to be blue anyway, okay? But, yeah, I did a little bit of masking or blotting off, you know, like this too, okay. And let's mask off this meadow area right here. And see, I've wiped off this perimeters here. So if I do have some of it going in the tree and in my figure there, it's not going to be a real dark version of it because it's going to be drier on the stamp. That's why the, you know, I make my process is very easy to do. Um, I design my stamps accordingly so that it can become an easy part. You just got to learn these steps like this, just, you know, where you have your transitions, you wipe off the edge, stamp them out. That's not a hard technique to do, you know what I mean? Just wiping off your stamp a little bit, kind of drying it, you know, drying the perimeter like that. That way you don't get a bunch of like bricks in the sky, you know, from stamping this image out. Um, so that's what I always start people off doing in my, um, you know, first, you know, class number one. It's just uh, working on their transitions because after that, you know, um, image blending 
just goes super easy for them. And it doesn't take long to do. We're talking about, like, I don't know, like two minutes. <laughs> so they learn simple techniques like that. That's applicable to any design. It's not just, oh, that's how you use a cloud stamp. Now I got to, you know, here's a 30 other Stampscape stamps, and there's like one thing that you have to learn with it. It's applicable across the board. Okay, so there's my clouds like that, all right? It almost seems like lighting's already hitting it like that, you know, but we're going to go in here now and uh, start to tone this in. And, uh, you know, we'll build up our scene. We'll build up some foreground after that. And then we're going to add in these moonbeams in here, the thing that I'm really looking forward to, especially with this figure here. I'm going to heat set this a little bit. Now, where do you color in? Well, you color in areas where you want color. Now, this, this is an oversimplified kind of explanation of this, but it's, nevertheless, it's a simple concept, okay? It's not easy to do if you've always been just doing absolute coloring, okay? But you can do it on your first try. You just have to, you know, make a conscious effort not to tone everything in. So, Looking at this, I want this moon to be nice and light, okay? But clouds reflect light, right? That's why we can see them um, in the daytime or nighttime. Areas down below, you know, this light on my hand is reflecting, you know, light, you know, on my underside. You can't see really the underside right here with my video here, but the underside of my shirt is a darker, like all the folds in the uh, shirt are a darker red, okay? So that being said, what do you keep light in here? Okay, you just keep light some of the stuff, okay? So here on this um, moon right here, I'm just going with a, a salvia blue right here. See this much at tree right here? Now this is just using a paper towel. People can't get over using paper towels because um, it's just such a strong, you know, weird kind of concept. Um, but I'm just using it to you know, it's like if you soak in, uh, you know, paper towel and something, it's going to absorb that liquid. So it's easy to transfer that liquid accordingly, okay? So see this moon right here? It's casting light on the side of the tree that's facing the light like that, okay? So on this side of this tree, right next to it, let's do the same thing. Let's make it a little bit more, um, what is it, left side shaded like that, okay? I see all these clouds right there on the back there. I'll kind of tone them out a little bit and put a little tone down below. Okay, we'll put a little bit of tone on this meadow because I don't want it just stark white, okay? So this guy right here, see she's casting a little bit of a shadow down there like so. Okay bringing some of this tone into the meadow. Again, I don't want it stark white, but uh, I don't want it too dark either. So right here, I'm kind of leaving a little bit of an open area that's illuminated. See that sh shading right over there? Now work on your shadow areas. Don't just kind of, you know, I want things like happen like that. No, you, you just build it up. The slower it kind of comes together, when you think about it, the more control you have over it. So just don't expedite the entire process. Don't move into your darker tones, you know, right away, okay? All right, so see these clouds right here? These clouds are darkened in some areas, but I'm leaving some of them illuminated, okay? Well, how do you create the light? Well, you just don't tone out all of the white of the paper, right? That's what, that's what always kind of confuses people that haven't, you know, that hasn't done this before. And they have, or they haven't, you know, they haven't seen it done before, really. Okay, so a lot of times they see that white cloud like that. So how'd you get that cloud white? Well, you don't tone it out. And it's like, uh, you know, 
they, they can't believe that you started on a white piece of paper, so they think that you have stamped out that white portion. But no, you stamped out the negative portion. And that's how my stamps are made. The illuminated areas are reversed out. You know, the way they really are, but most designs aren't kind of drawn that way. Like, illuminated areas are often dark. So like a lightning bolt looks like a, you know, like a black, you know, bolt or something like that. You can stamp in yellow or something like that. But I do the area, the negative space around the bolt so that the bolt stands out. And that's the same with the moons, like that. I make my areas around moons or stars or suns darker, and the lighter area is the thing that is illuminated, therefore. Okay, so going in here, see those shade, you know, shadows like that? Now, she really needs to cast a shadow too, doesn't she? So I'm just going to do a little bit of a kind of shadow like this. This is, you know, this paper towel is not exactly perfect for doing this type of, you know, detail work, but you can come in here with your whatever Copic markers, whatever you want, and add some tone down there with that if you want to, to get in more of a specific area. Okay, but now see this right here, I'm still building with my first color because I can go darker using more of my first color. Now when you move into your next tone is when you've kind of achieved the darkest tone that you're going to using that existing color. So if you can just go darker using your existing color, do that, okay? Now how dark do you take it? Well, again, that's up to you. You, you kind of you let your eye be the judge of it. Okay. You can have it more pastel if you want to. If you want more contrast with stronger shadows, then you go darker. See, this is a semi-gloss cardstock, so it's fairly absorbent, but you, you can really move your color on this just fine. Uh, matte's going to absorb your colors even faster, so, you know, maybe use kind of a lighter touch, you know, and you re-ink more often because it's absorbing your ink faster than a coated paper or a more coated paper, okay? All right. Just put her hand in shadow on that area right here and left her kind of illuminated a little bit more on her what is it her left side okay see this tree right here I'm kind of darkening in the tree a little bit more like that but there do you see your kind of uh, our lighting scheme in the scene and your lighting scheme is really just kind of the negative space around your shading scheme, okay? Areas that you've retained light are reflected light down here and up here in the sky, and the light of the moon is the represents the source of light. So you have source of light and reflected light just by simply not toning those areas out. Let's put her in kind of a bluish kind of a you know, shading here as well. The light of the moon, you wouldn't really have too much color. Although I did use quite a bit of color in my first one, just, I don't know, just to kind of mix it up a little bit. You know, artistic license, we can call it. All right, so that is uh, Salvia Blue. I once called it, uh, I, did, I don't know, I, I looked at it from a distance. <laughs> I had never heard the word salvia before. I didn't know what that was. So I just looked at it and I, I remember um, I was at a convention and I, I didn't demonstrate back then, um, early on. And uh, just this one person that always demonstrated for us, which was who were one of the artists for a stamp in the hand, another company that I worked for before starting Stampscapes. <laughs> I, I called it saliva blue. I said, well, you know, what's that? So I, uh, or I don't know, maybe she asked for it. She asked for, uh, you know, when she was done, can you, can you grab me a, because I was working the, uh, the inside of the booth helping customers and uh, I think she asked for a, 
I don't know, whatever, a number 60 Marvy, you know, off the rack because it was dry. That's what I'm guessing happened there. And uh, and I said, like, uh, what was that? Uh, saliva blue? <laughs> and she was cracking up. She goes, saliva blue? No, it's salvia. All right, so I'm going a little bit brighter and it's also darker too, okay? Brighter doesn't mean lighter. Brighter is a, you know, um, has to do with intensity, not lightness, okay? Value is lightness, okay? Um, intensity is relative, you know, brightness, dull, bright, okay? All right, so adding this down like so. Now I am going to add in some of these moonbeams later on, okay? So I do want to go fairly dark in some areas, you know, to create some contrast uh, within the scene. And I am coming in with a couple more colors, so I need to, you know, do a decent saturation with these lighter tones, okay? So you gotta have, you have to give yourself space to add in additional tones if you're going to use them, okay? Now, if I'm only gonna use, you know, a really light blue or something like this, then you put it wherever you want and use however much you want, but if you're, going to be using darker and darker tones, maybe in this case, like me, going all the way to black, then we have to leave space for it. And what I mean by that is, the more, the darker you go, I don't go into my scene as far as I did. So I have this kind of transitioning light, it's going from light to dark out here. So if I only go in here with the lightness like to here, then I only have like a tiny little bit of area to transition into that darker tone, okay? All right, so what I mean by that is, here's a little bit of this Prussian blue. That's the, it's a pretty dark blue, okay? But see this, I'm just going to keep it like right in there. And then here's where that number 10 blue is and the salvia blue out here. And you know, I say that with the little asterisks because you can use a very light shade of very dark, inherently dark color. You know, I go like this and that's Prussian blue but it's not the full version of it, which is like this color right here, okay? So again, if you can go darker using that existing color, just go darker with that. I'm doing that before I move to black. Okay, see this right here? I'm putting this up on that tree, uh, creating a little bit of a stronger shadow down here with that Prussian blue. Yeah, see, the, don't those trees look like they're really anchored into the scene now? I don't necessarily want that blue there, but, um, but it'll be a transition before I get into black. sky, use a nice light touch. When you're getting into the darker tones, keep using the drier version of that color on your applicator, be it, you know, whatever you're using. I'm, again, I'm just using the same paper towel. I was just telling people, selling some of that. I use paper towels. Like a sponge is really good too, like a kitchen sponge, but um, these, you know, paper towels and you know, these things that I use are, they're accessible anywhere in the world. They're cheap and they work excellent. It's kind of like finger painting. So people just don't, you know, they don't really kind of get it because they haven't done finger painting since kindergarten. <laughs> so, you know, it seems weird, you know, you're working on something and you're just using something like this. But when you think about it, when you're using wet media, what's designed to absorb wet, you know, something wet more than a paper towel or a sponge or something like that, you know, nothing. Uh, you know, it's out there, it's a proven kind of a 
thing, uh, device or whatever tool for doing exactly what we're doing here. Uh, you might get a little bit of, you know, it starts soaking through and you get it on your fingertips. This figure, I'm getting it on my fingertips here because I'm holding the you know, page like this, but you know, inky fingers, it's a badge of honor for us uh, stampers, or should be, because we're going to get really inky fingers all the time anyway. <laughs> so there's not very much you can do about it, so. Or you could, but if you're concentrating too much on you know, kind of ink avoidance, you know what I mean? I don't know if you're having kind of potentially as much fun as you could be having. Okay, uh, adding this down like that, but look at that strong kind of a um, shading and lighting scheme. And it's, it's all based around, you know, that lighting scheme that I established with that first color, you know, it's, I mean, you know, I'm kind of strengthening it and altering things a little bit here and there, but not very much. It's still, you know, by and large, it's still based on um, that, uh, you know, that coloring scheme that I did with the salvia blue, the first color. So what I retain in lightness with my first color, I'm just trying to retain in lightness with all the, you know, subsequent, you know, additional colors you know, that have come after it. Okay. Just a little bit of this black around my moon. Okay. Um, like that. I think that is about it in terms of, uh, uh, you know, this paper towel, at least, this ink uh, application portion of our uh, of our program <laughs> and let's take a couple copic markers here not copic but alcohol markers these aren't copics these ones are very inexpensive uh, la plumes all right and we're just going to reiterate some of this color right here this is you know I can get much more uh, specific um, areas of color using these Get into her, her dress. Working on the shading a little bit. And, and this is just putting on an extra layer of media. You know, it can potentially get a little bit richer looking. So if you ever, you know, it's like, if you, okay, you didn't, you know, get exactly how you wanted things with uh, the dye base inks, then just add more with your alcohol inks. And this is on a piece of a uh, semi-gloss, so I can use, maybe I'll use some, uh, yeah, that's right, I haven't used my Prismacolors in a while. There's a little bit of greenish tinge for my trees, maybe. A little bit of warmth. Not too much, this is kind of a cool green, so, you know, it won't show up too much. Oh, let's go into that grassy area with a little bit more warmth. I kind of like that, so, that greenish tinge, you know. Um, Let's do it with the uh, let's do it with the colored pencils here. Okay, so I'm doing it very lightly, okay, because I just want to get a little hint of some color in there. Look about like that. This is what you really can't do with a uh, glossy cardstock very well. Okay, um, colored pencils because it's just you know it's too slick of a surface and it doesn't stick very well. So. Um, lay that down, but you see that little tint of a uh, tone like that. And I think that did it right there. I don't think I need to do too much more. Here's um, a blue colored pencil, and I'll hit that and get a little bit more variation into these little grassy mounds. And it's like, wait, well, Kevin, I don't know where to hit that. Well, see, these are my little grassy mound. Um, textures in here. So 
I'm just coloring those, okay? Coloring just directly on those, okay? Because those represent the shadow areas, okay? So you can just look at your impressions or you can reference the design too. Chances are you have this in unmounted so you don't see a sticker like that on there, but uh, just reference the design. And here I'm kind of hitting the darker areas of the uh, tree. And let's see, here's black, the color that I stamped up the objects in. And so the opposite side of the trees from opposite from the moon, I should say. I'm getting a little bit more of a deeper black treatment. So they look like they're being illuminated by the tree. This tree to the right side of the moon is being left side illuminated. So I can color this side, the right side of that tree. Okay, if you want to anchor down your figures a little bit more, a little bit more shadow, you know, have them casting a shadow a little bit more, you can do that. And here, okay, this one is working really good for creating her shadow. I just kind of fake it. I just kind of have a shadow going out in this direction. Like that. And I just go right up to the feet like that. Okay. Like so. Let's create a little bit more of that texturing in the grass, I think. All right, let's add a little bit more textures down here too with some imagery. Now I'm going to use a stays on because I've added wax down here. So, you know, if I hit it again with, you know, my dye based black, it may or may not stick. I, I didn't put a real thick layer of a uh, tone down. This is the tiny rock small, but it just adds this little textural variation that looks really nice in the scene like that, doesn't it? You can add a lot of it, you know, in the uh, darker area and textures can kind of become almost like additional shadow forms as well. Uh, I don't want to go everywhere with it, but so you know, it's just, I don't know, it gives us a little bit of a, a stronger surface foundation for someone to stand on like that, right? Okay, so I think I want to bring in a little bit more of a tone into um, my figure here. So I'm gonna, this is a little bit of beige right here. Just a little bit of color on her dress, a little bit of warmth, I should say. Be able to do that on her skin too. You wouldn't really see warm tones typically. But this is again is artistic license in here, okay? I'm saying warm tones in a otherwise with a cool light, i.e. the moon shining on them. Okay, so see that? It just I don't know, it, hopefully you see a little bit of a difference there. Um, now let, uh, maybe emphasize it a little bit more. Here's a little bit of a darker kind of pinkish tone, you know. Putting it on the dress. That. Yeah, so, and but a cool light usually reflects cool light, not warmth, okay? Something like that. Okay, so that is that. Uh, okay, this is where I start adding a little bit more time because like, eh, that looks pretty good. I want to kind of emphasize a little bit more and more and more with something, okay? There's a little bit of pink right there. Okay. All right. I think that is good though. Now, um, let's see. I'm trying to decide if I want to add in some of this white pigment ink. Um, detailing now, or if I want to do it after I stamp some additional tones down in here. 
let's go with the let's go with the uh, let's go with the brilliance right here, the white, and then we'll add in some foreground, and then we'll be basically done. Okay, so white pigment ink on this cotton ball, 100% cotton cotton ball. I'm gonna keep smashing it down to get this cotton ball nice and flat. See how flat that is. If you add it in here, chances are it starts to fray a little bit. Smash it down. Now I'm using a used cotton ball because sometimes the used ones are a little bit better. You know, for about two or three usages. Adding this tone around my moon like this is giving me this really soft glowing light. See like that? Now watch out. Don't use like way too much ink, just like when you're toning the scene, you know. The less ink you have on here, kind of the little bit easier it is to control because it just adds a sl you know a small amount incrementally as opposed to really fast, right? And I'm adding it into those areas where I've retained some of the light um, lightness of the page, right? That's why we've retained some of those um, you know the white of the card like that. So we can go in here. Well, first of all, it represents lighting, but now we're just kind of emphasizing that light in there in a very soft way by adding this pigment ink, kind of haze over the top of it. Well, look at those clouds there. Doesn't it look like a really soft, really billowy light in there? I think it's a very welcoming looking light like that. Okay. I have a little bit of that white still over here. Now, if you don't have some, then don't add it. You know what I mean? Um, but if you have, here's this area's light down here. So this is on the clouds reflecting that light, but I'll add a little bit of a kind of a atmospheric kind of mist fog in the scene. It gives it a real dreamy quality, but you're also adding from a textural standpoint, a range of texture, having something lighter like that. But it's also softer, you know, in terms of that texture again, okay? Oops, I added too, too much, just wipe it off a little bit. And she's going to be dancing kind of in a, you know, by the light of the moon in a kind of a misty little area like that. You can put some on her like that. A little bit of a soft lighting, right, on her. A little bit of glowing light over here, a little bit more. I'll, I'll put a little bit on her dress. I, I didn't leave it too light over here, so I won't, I won't go too much. Okay. Now this uh, white pigment ink, it does dry and look a little bit darker than what it looks like when it's been freshly applied. So. Keep that in mind, it's not gonna completely disappear or anything like that, but it'll just be a little bit more subdued. So you add a little bit more in than you think you know you need. You can, you can if you haven't done it before, just you know, add it to where it looks good and when it dries, if you need to add more, then just go with another layer, you know, so until you get the you know, kind of the feel of it. Don't go like blockbuster and just add, you know, a good you know, a huge thick slathering. It's not going to be, you know, dry and lighten up that much, okay? Okay, so that is that. Um, we can add in some highlights later, or we can do it now, let's just do it now. I'm going to go in with my white paint pen, if I can find it, here we go. Sorry for the racket. I should have. I try to shake these things up if I remember to before doing the videos, but sometimes I forget. We're adding little. Okay, so those were like soft, you know, kind of additions of light with a white pigment ink. Now this is a crisp addition of light with a extra fine 0.7 millimeter acrylic paint pen.
putting some on those clouds right around in here. It's it's subtle because the clouds are fairly um, light to begin with, so a little white dot over a light area doesn't stand out too much. But that's what it represents. It represents kind of that little bit of extra highlighting in there. Um, you know, it's what a bit silver line clouds, you might say. Okay. Sometimes going with the semi-gloss with these clouds like this, it's a, it's really kind of soft looking, you know. It's a more crisp looking look on glossy. There's a little bit more definition, but this little bit of diffusion is kind of cool with the uh, the semi-gloss, which is a much closer to matte than it is glossy. Okay, so hopefully you can see that a little bit. Little highlights within there. Look at that cloud, isn't that fun? Okay, so um, let's add some highlights on the side of these trees facing the light. Sometimes when I go over my pigment ink, it goes up in the pen a little bit. Just get the pen flowing a little bit more, you know. A little bit of highlights on the side of the uh, tree facing my light source. I'm a little bit clogged up here because I went over my pigment ink and the pigment ink went up into the uh, little feeder um, whatever hole I guess. Okay, adding a few little highlights on my figure here on her hand and some of her dress. Eh, I really clogged this one up. Here. I might be running out of paint in this one. I've gone through so many of white paint pens. Get it kind of feeding. Good. Okay. Kind of going right over that colored pencil work on the, on the dress here. Acrylic pen, uh, paint pens really stick to everything really nicely. You can use them on glass. Um, plastic, wood, just about anything. Okay, I'm going to cluster some little highlights down in this grassy area. Maybe it represents some flowers, something like that, I don't know. It could represent dew reflecting off of the grass. Do in the moonlight. Okay, it's like kind of glistening, you know, forest floor. It kind of brings everything to life, doesn't it? little peekaboo area back in there between the trees. All right, now let's go a little bit more dramatic with this one. Let's have some, a few moonbeams running through here. And then we'll finish up here. Let's get a piece of scratch paper. Any type of paper, just as long as it's straight. And I'm going to go to the center of my moon, and that's going to be the source of my beams, okay? And I'm going to go with my white pigment ink again. 
I don't worry, these beams aren't going to be, well, they'll be pretty prominent, but <laughs> I'm going to also have some foreground in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some beams in front of some foreground and back of others, I think. Okay, so I'm just going roughly, well, uh, roughly, but yeah, pretty, pretty close to center um, with this emanating light beam, okay? And we're going to do these in different strengths. Don't go too strong. Well, I mean, you could if you want it like super, you know, dramatic, which maybe you do. I'm going to have some of these beams kind of weak, some of it a little bit wider, some of it thinner, some of it going off the, the page, some of it uh, kind of petering out. Uh, in other words, um, a lot of variation, okay? All right, so there's, that's one beam right there. See, it's, I mean, it's fairly weak right there, right? And then let's go with another one. I'll, I'll, I'm going to put this one behind our dancing figure, but in front of our... Um, sitting figure, okay. Maybe this beam's a little bit stronger, I don't know. Okay, so see that beam right there? Kind of going in front of her. We need a little bit one in between there, huh? That's too big of a gap. I'll tell you what, see that one up top went in front of the tree. I'm going to put this one behind the tree, so it'll go over here. This one is going to have to be fairly light because it's over a very light area. Yeah, maybe I'll put it a little bit over that tree. Okay, so see there's another beam right there, like about like so. And then let's go on another one coming behind her. I'm going to also put a little bit more on the, sorry, on the top of the beam, like up here, more than on the bottom. So I'll have a little bit more of a kind of a tapered beam going from light over here, darker over here, but also light on top and, you know, darker on the bottom of the beam. I think it makes for a more natural looking beam like that. See that? So that's in back of these two beams are in back of her. Then I'll put another one like right in front of her. And we'll see if it will read that way. So I'm putting this whole beam across all of her clothes that way. Like this. Okay. I'll have to go fairly strong because, uh, you know, um, you know, there's, there's an, uh, it's not a dark area right here. So I went fairly thick with this beam right here. And let's see, let's put another one. Yeah, let's go this way. Okay, we'll put one in back of this tree and in front of this tree. Maybe it looks a little bit more three-dimensional that way than you just have everything all in front of everyone, okay? Which looks, you know, pretty good too, but I think this looks better. It just makes everything look more dimensional this way, having um, light beams kind of weaving in and out of the scene like this. And let's, let's put this beam in front of this tree, uh, or both of these ones, okay? That one's a pretty thick one right there, pretty strong beam, like that, like so. And I think we'll go with uh, one more. It seems like I've lost focus. Here we go. And we'll go with one more down here, I think. 
or let's go let's go a little bit high with this one let's go like that but maybe maybe it's a little bit weaker you know it's it's in a fairly dark area so even going weak should show up you know pretty prominently like that see like that now <laughs> these are really, really prominent over here so I need to balance this off a little bit more with a little bit more strength let's make this one this one's the natural one to go a little bit stronger because it's just it's in a darker area so I'll just go a little bit lighter kind of closer to the point of you know whatever emanation like that see that it's a little bit stronger right there and I think that should do it now I was talking about weaving some areas in here let's let's see what this looks like so let's go with um, some impressions let's add in some foreground and then I might put some um, I'm putting this in stays on because it'll stamp right over the top of these um, all this different media no problem uh, the waxy you know colored pencils and everything and plus it it is fairly dark some nice foreground framing like that one of those whatever four or five f's of a uh, scene building you know foundation filler stamps focal points um, foreground and let's see I'm looking at that meadow area. I want something a little bit more attention getting down there. Let's see, I probably have my, there it is right here. This is a green, um, green acrylic paint pen okay it's a little bit of more detail down below. Sorry, you can't see that very well in this video. But let's do some more. Um, I'm going to add in some of these uh, additional leaves coming from above. Okay, kind of gave it a nice uh, bold, um, uh, 
I guess, framing over the top of that, like so. Now let's get a little bit more bold with um, some additional foreground elements, okay? So you've seen me do this with um, like these little glowing orbs or something like that, but it's kind of like one of those things with um, kind of light flares, like lens flares, I should say, not light flares, but lens flares. When you have um, kind of a lens flare, you have these kind of little circles like this, but um, you know, as it moves in the beam a little bit closer, they're kind of larger like this. Make some smaller ones kind of closer to the moon. I mean, how close is, you know, it's relative, but have some of them in the beam itself like that. Okay, go something like that, I think. Let's put a nice big one in this beam right here. Went down that way. Okay, so go like that, and then we'll take our Q-tip cotton swab. I usually don't like to say brands, but I don't know what can I say. Yeah, the Q-tips are, you know, they're going to be cotton as opposed to the uh, synthetic ones. The synthetic materials just don't take moisture the same. If they don't take moisture in, they can't transfer it as, uh, you know, the same. So uh, you can try it if it's all you have. You give it a try, and if it doesn't work, I'd recommend 100% cotton balls, 100% cotton swabs. They do really great in our wet media styles of applications, okay? Okay, I'm just making these little glowing little um, lens flares. I don't know, maybe they're orbs. I just find that they look real magical. <laughs> if you watch like Disney movies like uh, Brave or uh, Maleficent or something like that, you know, you see all these little kind of glowing magical little things, you know, um, making just that visual space just so much more exciting looking and... Uh, Alive, you know. And it makes these little lights. It gives a little bit of an extra soft texture. Like that, but look at that. Okay. Maybe I'll spray seal this, um, and then I'll format it into a card here. I'm gonna make this service down here a little bit more exciting with you know, a little bit of a brighter tone down here. I was thinking that green looked a little anemic. I was being, you know, pretty conservative in terms of my usage of that lime greenish tone, but I think we can go on and add a little bit more here just to kind of warm it up a touch. Maybe that was a little bit too much. Um, let's see, we'll combine a little bit of it though. Here's a little bit of the blue that I like so much. This blue is uh, aqua marine. OK, 
Okay, I think that should do it. Uh, a little bit of darker blue. If you add some of this down, it's like, oh, I should have used a little bit more white pigment ink, then just go back and add more pigment ink. One of these beams isn't as light as you want it to, then just go back in and add some right over the top of it, more pigment ink right over the top of it. Now what I was thinking about doing, I don't think I need to, is I was thinking about running a beam right over the top of this. So these reeds are in front of some of the beams, but in back of others. But kind of where I stamped it into that light, it looks lighter anyway, even though it's right on top of the beam, you know, the beam, because I was stamping into, you know, a thick white pigment ink there. So I think it just looks lighter inherently. It doesn't look like you know, like a dark reed in front of the beam. It just looks integrated within the light anyway, so. All right, so I'm gonna spray seal this and format into a card, and I think we are done. And that being said, I really like this aqua marine, so I'm gonna put her, some of her shadows, you know, it will be a little bit of a bluish tinge, I think, too. Like that. All right, that is that. We'll come back and actually I'll take a look and see if this needs anything else um, in a bit. Uh, you know, that being said, I, I think some larger forms down here just for a little bit of a textural um, variety. Let's go with some of this. This is a, a three millimeter uh, paint pen. It'll just give it a bolder kind of texturing in here. Yeah, maybe it'll push contrast a little bit more because it is light. If I put it into areas that are fairly light, but it did receive a little bit of a, you know, um, tone with whatever ink or uh, colored pencils or something like that. Yeah, it's a little bit more exciting, I think, like that. Kind of brings that uh, grassy area to life a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to try to resist making this into a mirror card, but uh, it's tempting. I know, it's, it's, it's a similar card as my other one, but um, yeah, we'll just format this and just do it into a straight card. And I think I do want to um, add a word stamp. I Yeah, I'm going to have to let this dry a little bit. I, or is that dry? Yeah, maybe it's dry. Let's see. Uh, night music would be kind of interesting. I wonder if that'll... It just has to be... Yeah, I'm not sure if it's dark enough for night music to stand up against a Starlight, twilight, clouds, night, dusk. Um, hmm... Oh, one that I wanted to use at some point in time with my other stamps uh, is Moonlight is, um, Moonlight is Sculpture, uh, Sculpture, is that it? Is Moonlight is Sculpture? This one says Clouds right here, that'd be kind of interesting, Clouds and Moon. I don't have a thing that says Moon Beams, though. I'm gonna have to go with the moonlight again. Hmm. I wonder if it would show up. I'm not, I'm just not sure if it's dark enough. Maybe right here, it'd get, it would go right in front of the beam though. Maybe right here. Yeah, eh, it might not be. I'm going to put this on, maybe I'll put this on the outside of the card or something like that. All right, but let me give this a little bit of time and I'll think about it and come back again and finish this piece off. Okay, sprayed and formatted, card formatted that is. Still a couple things left to do. 
All right, so this is a semi-gloss cardstock, but I sprayed it with a Krylon Triple Thick, which gave it a pretty glossy finish. So if you ever want to do, you know, like matte or semi-gloss, but you like that real deep, rich, glossy texture, I guess uh, Krylon Triple Thick is a good way to go. Uh, it looks like I got some kind of glue on this right here. Uh, let me work that out a little bit. Um, yeah, I guess I put it down in some glue. I'm going to spray this again, though, because I, I have another layer of imagery to put over the top of this, so I'm, yeah, I guess I shouldn't use, maybe I shouldn't use the same tray for my glue spray adhesive as I do with my, uh, uh triple thick, uh, spray sealing here. Uh, that glue's coming, just wiping right off, though. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> it should it should seal it off pretty good though. So keep that in mind. So I don't know. I guess that makes a pretty good argument for spray sealing because uh, you know it really seals it off. You can get something off right there, a little smudgy. But I'm gonna spray seal this again. So anyways, look at those light beams like that. Aren't those kind of fun? All right. So let's see. I guess I should have taken a look at this before I. Um, came on again here, but uh, let's figure out some different words here. Here's a knight. You can, we can do like multiple impressions maybe. But it, after I sprayed it, I felt that it got darker in a lot of these areas and opened up the opportunities for, you know, some word stamps in here. So, um, let's see. Maybe we'll go with, I don't know, I might go with a couple of them, I'm not sure. Um, we can go with like four, actually. I, I'm not going to do that, but you could. Um, let's see. Hmm. There's night. <laughs> the one that they use is really moonlight, but I don't think I want to do that one again. Um, yeah, maybe just go with the moon or something like that. Moon and clouds would be good. Starlight. Yeah, There's not really starlight in this one. Oh, okay, yeah, here, here. Actually, this one's dream. I might, I think I, I might go for a couple different words in this one. I mean, there's a lot of choices here. It's, I can kind of going back and forth on it as far as which one I really want to do. Um, the most, if you kind of flip around, then, I don't know, either one is probably good, you know. All right, so this one's dream. I use that one a lot. I think it's fairly evocative. I'm gonna hold this down a little bit longer. This isn't a uh, stays on, so there's no chance of it completely drying, but I'm letting it set up a little bit. Okay, so there's dream, uh, meaning the the ink kind of sets up a little bit and uh, transfers, you know. Um, here's moon, as in moonlit, moonlight uh, dreamers, the set. Okay. Okay, dream and moon. 
do like the look of um, text with uh, imagery. I've always liked the marriage of that um, and doing, you know, design work and I don't know, just going back to high school, um, being an editor for one of the sections in my uh, school yearbook and having to, that was my kind of first experience designing um, something, um, you know, figuring out the uh, placement of um, imagery plus text and copy, you know, figuring, you know, font size and everything like that. I was also in graphic arts in high school. Uh, doing things like that, but actually doing like layouts and stuff like that. I, this is almost kind of more akin to that, uh, the spirit of uh, that, I find. Okay, so that is that. I think I'll spray seal this. I'll let this dry a little bit, and I'll spray seal it again, uh, just to seal everything out a little bit more. And then I think I'm going to use one of these... Um, pieces down here. I rarely ever use these ones, but I really should. It's like a Stampscapes original buy, you know, and you put that down here and you sign your name underneath it or something like that. Or, uh, oh, I'm trying to read these upside down here, or backwards. Winter's card. Uh, originally landscaped original by <laughs> it's been a while since I designed these uh, scenic sentiment uh, sets but I think that looks pretty fun here um, I'm really happy with these scenes I mean they're not anything you know too out of the ordinary or anything like that uh, for me but just instead of a deer here you know the people whatever it, it makes it, 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 it's a little bit different of a, a spirit, you know, it's a little bit more of an evocative spirit, I find. Sign down below. All right. So there we have it. Let's add in a few little extra strong little highlights in here maybe strong meaning i don't know it's it'll be sometimes when you spray seal or these things dry out a little bit um you know the uh the paint on this it it kind of dries with a little bit more of a transparency so the media underneath it shows through a little bit um so instead of you know adding this right on top of the uh, the dye based media you know water-based acrylic against a water-based dye or something like that where it kind of turns the uh it influences the color of the water-based acrylic a little bit what you're really doing on top of the sealant is you're just adding this on top of the sealant so you're not going to have very much of that influence or less of the influence of the uh, the water-based media underneath um kind of merging in with it so here we have it here moonbeams moonbeam delight maybe that we should call it something like that <laughs> so hope you enjoyed the card thanks so much for watching and if you're ever looking for something, you know, kind of adding a dynamic kind of, um, I don't know, whatever uh, statement to something, these uh, crepuscular rays are really fun to add into anything. Doesn't have to be around a moon, could be around just a word stamp or something, it could be happy birthday and you have these beams coming out from it to uh, really kind of add kind of a sense of drama as well as dimension into your piece. Okay, so thanks again. And a couple of extra things here, I guess. Getting some of that moonlight to really reflect off of her uh, clothes here. A little bit more.
There's always those little touches, which I can kind of do forever, so <laughs> I will try to not. I'll try to stop somewhere along the line, but those little touches like that are fun. Okay, thanks so much for watching.